I thought spending Christmas in a remote, snow-blanketed manor would be a dream come true. Little did I know, our holiday retreat would morph into a nightmare. The Yuletide Manor stood tall against the wintry night, its aged bricks and looming towers veiled in a haunting elegance. A quaint yet unsettling place for a festive gathering. As we arrived, a shiver ran down my spine, though the bitter cold could only claim partial responsibility. The air inside was frigid. Despite the roaring fire in the grand hearth, shadows danced menacingly across the walls, flickering in rhythm with the crackling flames. Our host, an eccentric uncle whose tales often straddled the line between fact and fiction, greeted us with a grin too wide to be genuine. That night, as the clock struck midnight, strange occurrences began. Whispers echoed in empty corridors, their words indecipherable but undeniably chilling. Objects moved of their own accord, or so it seemed. The antique clock chimed out of sync with time, a discordant melody that set my nerves on edge. Each passing hour unraveled another layer of dread. Footsteps echoed from unoccupied rooms, and a pervasive feeling of being watched lingered. The portraits adorning the walls seemed to track our every move, their eyes following as we traversed the halls. The once inviting grand feast on the dining table warped into a grotesque display. The food decayed before our very eyes, emitting a putrid stench that clawed at our senses. Our attempts to flee were thwarted by doors that led to nowhere and hallways that twisted upon themselves. It was then I noticed the peculiar ornaments adorning the Christmas tree. Each bauble held a sinister secret, a lock of hair, an old weathered bone, a faded photograph with faces scribbled out. They pulsed with an otherworldly energy, casting an eerie glow that tainted the festive ambiance. Amidst the chaos, a haunting chorus of children's laughter emanated from the attic, though there were no children among us. The dreadful sound grew louder, resonating in the very core of my being. As we huddled in the flickering candlelight, our uncle's words from earlier that day echoed in my mind. Beware the spirits that haunt this manor. They are bound by the sins of Christmas's past. The night wore on, each moment suffused with a terror that surpassed comprehension. The veil between the world of the living and the spectral realm had been torn asunder, and we were trapped in its malevolent grasp. I awoke in a cold sweat, drenched in fear. But was it all a nightmare? I dared not venture downstairs to find out. With trembling hands and a heart racing in sync with the chaotic rhythm of the manor, I crept downstairs. The air felt charged, pregnant with an unnatural energy that made every step an arduous journey through an unseen battlefield. The once grand manor had transformed. The festive decorations had withered into grotesque manifestations. The Christmas tree stood as a spectral monument, adorned with baubles that seemed to pulse with a malignant life force. The air was thick with the scent of decay, a sickly sweetness that clung to the walls like a parasite. Shadows twisted and contorted, casting elongated forms that seemed to shift and slither at the corner of my vision. I dared not glance at the portraits lining the walls. Their gaze felt more penetrating, their eyes appearing to follow my every move with an unnerving intensity. The haunting echoes of children's laughter still reverberated, the source remaining elusive. A gust of icy wind whistled through the corridors, carrying a chilling whisper that seemed to beckon me towards the attic. My heart pounded, a drumbeat of terror that urged me to flee, yet curiosity, a macabre fascination, tethered me to the house. With a trembling hand, I pushed open the creaking door leading to the attic. The stairway ascended into an abyss of darkness. Each step felt heavier, as if an unseen force sought to hinder my ascent. As I reached the summit, the air grew colder, an arctic embrace that clawed at my skin. The source of the haunting laughter was now unmistakable. Before me stood the spectral forms of children, their translucent figures playing amidst an ethereal snowfall that twirled in defiance of gravity. Their faces held an otherworldly beauty, yet their eyes bore a sorrowful weight that tugged at the core of my being. They beckoned me to join their spectral dance, their silhouettes shimmering in the moonlight that filtered through the attic's ancient windows. I felt a longing, a pull to immerse myself in their spectral game, to be lost in their sorrowful yet enchanting melody. 
The icy tendrils of their laughter seeped into my bones, wrapping around my consciousness, threatening to pull me into their timeless embrace. A primal fear surged within me, a warning that cut through the allure of the spectral dance. With a forceful will I tore myself away and stumbled backward, fleeing the attic in a state of terror and confusion. Yet, even as I descended the stairs, the haunting laughter lingered, echoing in the hollow chambers of the manor, a lament that whispered of ancient sins and restless spirits. Determined to unravel the mystery that gripped the Yuletide Manor, I resolved to confront the haunting forces that held us captive within their spectral grasp. With trepidation clawing at my every step, I sought to uncover the secrets that bound these malevolent spirits to this cursed place. As I ventured through the shadow-laden corridors, the manor seemed to shift and contort, its very architecture morphing into a labyrinth designed to confound and entrap. Whispers continued to assail my senses, their words indiscernible yet laden with a weight that seemed to speak of forgotten sins. I stumbled upon a forgotten chamber, hidden in the darkest recesses of the manor. The room exuded a chilling aura, the air heavy with the weight of bygone transgressions. The walls were adorned with eerie symbols and cryptic markings, each stroke seemingly etched with the purpose of binding the spectral entities that haunted the manor. In the center of the chamber lay an ancient tome, its pages weathered with age and laden with the weight of forgotten knowledge. The book exuded an otherworldly energy, a beacon amidst the pervasive darkness that cloaked the room. With trembling hands I pored over the arcane text, each passage unraveling a grim tale of a family's descent into darkness, their twisted rituals and unforgivable acts that bound them to the spirits that now tormented the living. The words spoke of a ritual, a forgotten incantation that, if performed with the utmost precision, could sever the ties that bound the spirits to this realm. But the cost was steep, a sacrifice that demanded the surrender of something dear, an offering to satiate the spectral hunger. As the night wore on, the manor seemed to awaken with a newfound malevolence. Shadows danced in unholy communion, the whispers crescendoed into an eerie chorus, and the spirit's lament grew louder, their sorrowful cries piercing the very fabric of reality. Determined to bring an end to this haunting, I delved into the rituals detailed in the ancient tome, gathering the necessary components for the incantation. But as the clock struck midnight, the spectral children appeared before me, their eyes pleading and sorrowful. The ritual demanded a sacrifice, and in that moment of grim realization, I understood the true cost. I was to offer not just an object or a token, but a piece of my very essence. The echoes of the haunting laughter filled the chamber, mingling with the sounds of the incantation. As I prepared to complete the ritual, a chilling certainty settled within me. The choice before me was not just about liberating the manor, but about sacrificing a part of myself to the spectral entities that yearned for release. With the weight of the ancient ritual resting heavy on my shoulders, I hesitated, torn between the desire to liberate the tormented spirits and the dreadful realization of what the sacrifice entailed. The spectral children gazed at me with sorrowful eyes, their silent plea urging me to complete the ritual. The haunting chorus of their laughter intertwined with the arcane incantation, resonating through the chamber like a spectral requiem, as the final words of the incantation hung heavy in the air, an otherworldly force surged through the room, a tempest of spectral energy that seemed to rend the very fabric of reality. The manor quaked, its walls vibrating with an ethereal power that transcended the laws of the mortal realm. I hesitated, the enormity of the sacrifice weighing heavily on my soul. It wasn't just a token or a material offering, it was to surrender a part of myself, an intrinsic essence to placate the spirit's hunger for release. In that moment of paralyzing uncertainty, the manor convulsed in an eruption of unearthly energy. Shadows coalesced into grotesque forms, the air thick with the presence of the spectral entities that thrived on the cusp between the living and the dead. The spectral children's eyes reflected an understanding, a grim resignation to the cycle of torment that bound them to this cursed abode. Their silent whispers echoed, urging me to make the ultimate sacrifice. But in the depths of that haunting moment, a realization dawned, 
a sacrifice born of coercion held no true liberation. It was a perpetuation of the curse, a cycle of suffering that demanded an endless toll. With a sudden surge of defiance, I abandoned the ritual, the incantation trailing off into an uncertain silence. The spectral energies waned, the manor returning to a semblance of calm, the haunting laughter fading into a mournful echo. As the night wore on, the Yuletide manor seemed to reclaim a semblance of tranquility. The whispers ebbed, the shadows subsided, and the spectral presence that once gripped the ancient walls began to recede. The first light of dawn filtered through the frost-laden windows, casting a spectral glow upon the fading remnants of the once-tormented manor. The echoes of the spirit's lamentation dissipated into the morning air, a mournful chorus bidding farewell to a bygone era of suffering. With a heavy heart, I departed from the now-hushed abode, the weight of the night's haunting revelations lingering as a testament to the spectral forces that transcended the boundaries between the worlds of the living and the dead. As I glanced back at the manor, now veiled in the morning light, a silent promise lingered in the air, a vow to uncover the secrets that bound the spirits and liberate them without succumbing to the cycle of sacrifice and torment. The story of the Yuletide Manor and its spectral inhabitants would remain a haunting memory, a tale whispered in hushed tones, a reminder of the unbreakable tether between the living and the ethereal realms. And thus, the chapter of that fateful haunted Christmas would linger as a testament to the enigmatic forces that straddled the boundaries between the mortal world and the spectral unknown.